Hello each and everyone out there tonight or out there today. My name is Rainer, this is Rainier Books. This is your favorite booktube channel and I'm here on Sunday, October the 23rd of 2022 for a weekly wrap-up or a check-in or a summit or whatever you want to call it. Let's do this. Apparently we have a week behind us which revealed us a new winner of the Booker Prize, the novel The Seven Moons of Malia Almeida won the Booker Prize. I tried to order it from a Swedish bookshop. I haven't read it yet. I want to read it definitely because so many of you have raved about it. I mean, so many predictions for the Booker, except my own. I went statistically and politically for Novaya Bulawayo and Glory because I thought they would pick a woman but they picked another author, another guy, the third man in a row, a hat trick for men at the Booker, but it doesn't mean anymore. I think uh, it's, it's not so important anymore if you're a man or a woman, if you're um, from Europe or Asia or Africa, they just give prizes to the best novel. I hope so. But most of you have said that the Seven Moons of Mali Almeida is a worthy winner, so I believe you, my fellow booktubers, and I believe the jury of the Booker Prize. But let me talk about the two books that I have finished this week, the books that I'm currently reading. First day back at school. The sky heavy with monsoon clouds, the schoolyard clustered with students within striding distance of shelter. The kika trees planted along the boundary wall or the neem tree partway up the path from gate to school building. The many Bougainville framed doorways carved into the building's yellowstone facade. The area of the playing field beneath the jutting balconies on the first and second floors. Only a few boys, with daring to prove, roamed the most exposed parts of the yard, shirt sleeves rolled up, hands in pockets. Zara, standing beside the arcway that housed the brass bell, was using her height to look over the heads of all the girls and most of the boys, searching. She is searching for Mariam, and this is the novel Best of Friends by Camilla Shamsi, the great British author who won the Women's Prize in 2017, if I remember it right, for her brilliant novel Home Fire that I read last year. Best of Friends by Camilla Shamsi is her new novel. It came out just a few weeks ago. It was published by, I think, Bloomsbury, yeah, by Bloomsbury Circus in London, and I prefer the British, the UK cover from the American cover. And I actually did not read this book. I listened to the book in full, but I wanted to have it. I wanted to own it. So I bought, luxuriously, I bought myself also the hardback copy of that book to reread certain parts of it if I want to. This is a great, wonderful novel that plays out in two different places. In, two different worlds, you might say. First in Karachi, in Pakistan, where Zara and her best friend, Mariam, they are friends since they were four years old, where they grow up. They grow up in a very privileged way, in a very privileged area, in a very privileged part of Pakistani society. Pakistan is a very poor country, but Zara's father is a cricket journalist with a quite good income. He belongs to the upper class, although he's not filthy rich. But filthy rich is Mariam and her father and grandfather, most of all, Mr. Khan, who owns the famous Khan Leather Factory. And Mr. Khan has also, the grandfather has also contacts up to the prime minister and also to people who can solve problems if you have problems that are not very compatible with the law. This is a lot about this friendship in the first part of the book, which is, I think, about half of the book. Uh, when they are 14 years old, Zara and Mariam, where we meet their parents, where we meet their surroundings, where we meet the expectations that their parents have for them, and also where we see how the dictatorship in Pakistan by General Ul, I think Ul Haq, by General Haq is oppressing the country and um, it's Zara's father who at one point 
gets a visitor, an old school friend who now works for the secret police. And he, this friend from the former friend from the secret police, tells Zara's father to speak about the president and his love for cricket in his next cricket show, on his next cricket show. Otherwise, there might be some problems for him. And the family gets very afraid. But then General Ulhak is killed in an airplane accident and sooner... A couple of months later, Benazir Bhutto will be elected the first female ever to be prime minister of Pakistan, Benazir al Bhutto, who was later murdered, as so many Pakistani leaders were. This is the first part of the novel, and it's also about the sort of awakening sexuality of these two girls, of Mariam and of... Zara, because they also like, like every teenager, they like to do sometimes things that are on the edge, things that are forbidden. And one night they go out with a boy, his name is, I think his name is Hakim, and they are, yeah, they are getting in a sort of trouble, which I will not reveal for you, that would be too much spoiling here. But they go out with Hakim and they get in a situation that will come back to them 30 years later. 30 years later, Mariam and Zara are both in London, England. They have emigrated from Pakistan to London, and still they belong to the upper class now of the British society. Zara is a very important, very well-respected civil rights activist. She is the leader of a civil rights organization. Mariam, on her side, is still in the economy. She is a businesswoman. She is into tech. She also owns an app called Image, which she has supported. And this app gets into Zara's um, circles because there's a young man that Zara supports who gets into trouble. A woman gets into trouble because of Image and there are some uh, challenges to this friendship, but I'm not going to reveal much more of it. I think the second part is a little bit more, um, yeah, a little less interesting to me at least than the first part. The first, the Karachi part, is extremely well described and full of life and full of colors and full of Pakistan. Uh, the second part is about London and about how these women have adjusted. Mariam is living on Primrose Hill, and this is the second time that I meet Primrose Hill in literature this year. Primrose Hill must, must be one of the most upper-class areas of London. I will take a look at Primrose Hill when I get to London for the next time, I promise that. And my next trip to London is already booked, so I can look forward. It will not be this year, but next year I will travel to London again. And maybe I'll meet some booktubers, maybe I'll meet some of my viewers as well. That would be just beautiful. So this is a very good book. I liked it a lot. It's another um, Camilo Shamsi book that I can recommend. Home Fire is slightly better, but Home Fire is also what I would call a masterpiece. And Best of Friends is just a good novel. One of the better ones of 2022, at least. The second book that I finished, finally, it took me a couple of weeks to read all the stories. I think there are there are 12 stories in this book. This is called Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. Stories, 12 stories from Maine, from the, from the Penobscot nation in the United States. Plays out mostly in a reservation and the main figure, the main character in all the 12 stories. That's why you also could name this, could call this actually a novel is a, a man called D or David. He grows up with his sister Paige, with, mostly with his mom, because the dad and mom have broken up. The dad is somewhere else, displaced, and the mom lives together with a new guy who is also abusive, an alcoholic who is also trying to abuse the sister, sexually assault the sister of David and D. His name is Frick. And this is kind of a hopeless book, but also with a lot of humor. But I have read now like two, three or four books about Native American life. And it always strikes me that it's so hopeless, so miserable, so full of violence, of things that happened in the past that influence the future and that make people cannot blossom out or 
blossom in a way they should do or they, they would deserve to because the, the ghosts of the past are still haunting them and they're coming back and they're always getting into their lives. So this is a lot happening in these stories, especially the last one, uh, which is, uh, I think, the best story also in this um, collection. It is called The Name Means Thunder. And then I like the first story very much, which is called Burn. And some other stories, not all the stories resonated so well with me here. Uh, some were not so really interesting and I didn't really know where the author was getting at. But then the stories, the four or five stories, but half of the stories that are really, really good belong to the best stories that I have read this year. So Tin House has published this in Portland, Oregon. Stories from the East Coast published on the West Coast of the United States. These were the two books that I finished last week. I have get, gotten, I've gotten a couple of books in my mail, which I bought. Um, this is JM Originals, the first book, and it was on the long list of the National Book Award in the United States. This is Nobody Gets Out Alive by Lay Newman. Stories about women in Alaska in different decades. I really looking forward to read this because Alaska has always been a special interest for me. The second one that I got uh, recently was is a book that is on the shortlist of the National Book Award and it's called The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. This book is about uh, a place which doesn't exist about uh, in Indiana and uh, Tess Gunty has written a story about several young people and their lives in a more poor part of the United States and which culminates into violence. I think the main protagonist, the protagonist of the novel is an obituary writer who writes obituaries online. Uh, this sounds interesting to me. Another one that I bought when I was in Gothenburg, almost two weeks ago already, is, uh, and I never know how to pronounce her name, it's Celeste Nink and her book Are Missing Hearts. This, uh, I read only the first page and I was already uh, hooked to it. The letter arrives on a Friday, slit and resealed with a sticker, of course, as all the letters are, inspected for your safety, packed. It had caused confusion at the post office, the clerk unfolding the paper inside, studying it, passing it up to a supervisor, then the boss, but eventually it had been deemed harmless and sent on its way. No return address, only a New York NY postmark six days old. On the outside, his name, Bird, and because of this, he knows it's from his mother. This is about a boy who has a very common, regular name, but who calls himself and is called by his mother, Bird. Our Missing Hearts, I think, is a book that is partly a dystopia, if I understood it right, because it plays in the United States where certain books are forbidden and where um, in searing injustice is coming and but there's there are limited chances to create change and um seems to be very well written celesting and our missing hearts published here by penguin press that's about it and to not bore you out i will publish the channel plans in a different video because I've already spoken for about 15 minutes and no longer than 15 minutes should a video be actually. I realize that when I when I see uh, how the reactions are on my interviews that I do with football players, with soccer players, on my other channel, link down below. Uh, so I leave it at this and I say that the channel announcements come in a couple of days. On Tuesday probably I will record them right after this. So stay tuned to the channel and subscribe to the channel and I will post more regularly here. That's what I can tell you already before the announcements come. Thanks you, have a good day, have a good evening wherever you are and see you soon, bye.